Jennifer Moffitt. Hello. I'm Cynthia Miller, and I'm so happy to meet you and interview you for our McLean Art Fest. So let me start with a, kind of a broad question, because I know your background, so I'm really, and it's so just wild and crazy and that you've, you've got left, arm, left, left side and right side of your brain coming together for this beautiful art. Looking back over time, describe of your few of your most formative learning experiences, how they've brought you to where you are today as an artist. Well, I grew up in a very artistic community uh, in Clarksburg, Maryland. My mother was a piano and voice teacher and I was surrounded by uh, this little enclave of artists. Um, we had a woman who did wood cutting and watercolors and acrylics. And uh, I just feel as though my community was very artistic. And from elementary school on, I was drawing. Um, I experimented with um, uh, all kinds. Of, in high school, all of my elective classes were art. Um, I took... Um, videography in college, my, my honors degree for my senior project in college, instead of being a paper, I was given permission to do a, a video, uh, which is the first time that had ever been done. Um, and so I've tried, and then in my professional life, I started out in, in, as a photography assistant. So I've tried a number of different uh, artistic medium. And, um, and then I got into my career and you sort of follow your strengths. Um, and I followed my strength of, uh, management of, of creative departments, uh, but I missed making my own art. So uh, I was on vacation um, in 2009 with my husband's family and there was a, a bead shop nearby. And I, I'd heard so much about beading, it just seemed to be the latest craze. And I was like, how hard could that be? So um, I hadn't been able to find a pink necklace to my liking and I'm like, well, let me let me just check out the shop. And I went into that store and looked around and I feel as though I had been plugged in after being unplugged for years. I felt oh. an electricity going through me. Whoa. And it, it really, it just woke up, woke me up to the fact that I needed to explore my own creativity um, rather than shuffling everyone else's around. Uh, and so I started doing that in the background, taking classes and creating things. And I did beading for several years until I got, uh, my husband gave me a glass fusing class for Christmas one year and I took it and that was I was it. hooked. I was just uh -huh. hooked. So when, you, when you're doing your work, are there themes or, or the excitement comes from the color or where does that, where are the driving forces for, for your beautiful, beautiful necklaces and earrings and, and things? I, well, I it's a curiosity of what happens when I try this. Um, and the other part really is from the materials. I work with uh, materials in almost every single piece that have metallic coatings on them. Um, what I'm wearing right now has two different metallic coatings. It's dichroic and iridescent. Um, and sometimes I'll work with double dichro or, you know, um, combinations of different things to get different um, results and, and just to see what happens when I do this. Um, but dichro is just, it's so cool. And um, I think it has a really bad rap from the 1970s. Uh, where, you know, it just was done a lot and overdone. Um, but I don't remember seeing anything like this from Dichro of the 70s or even Dichro of today. So elegant. And I'm, you know, I, I, I'm saying that from my heart. I wouldn't, it really does look elegant uh, and, and, you know, worthy of, of a statement piece. You know, and do, and do you think of, of different statement pieces to sort of motivate you to combine your colors or how does that work? Uh, well, I find that in, uh, you know, testing the, the materials that certain colors work better than others when I'm trying to, to put things together. Uh, and also certain colors bring people into the booth more often. Um, I find that uh, blue is my favorite color and blue is what attracts people to the booth faster than any other color. Isn't that uh, interesting? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and so, you know, something like that brings people in. Um, but also sometimes my signs, people will come in and go, I want that one, you know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but there are certain times when blue doesn't give me the right result with the combination, you know, with the pattern that I might use with it. So uh, I do f sometimes follow, you know, form and function do have to work together sometimes. Uh, and then there are times when I make mistakes that turn out brilliantly. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> I've had a couple of mistakes that are like, oh my God, I love that because, you know, goodness knows you have plenty of mistakes that are like, I'm never showing this to anyone ever. It, this didn't happen. <laughs> You know, we are in the in the realm of process. So when you come into your studio um, on a when on a daily basis or whatever your discipline is, how, what are you thinking? Are you saying this is earring day? This is pendant day? This is, or is it is it more of the materials? What are you? What tell us something about how how your day goes in your studio or how you separate your different pieces? Yes, I do generally go in with at least one piece in mind, whether it's a, a pendant or, you know, I don't make sets a lot, um, but uh, sometimes I do. And um, I'll have definitely one goal in mind uh, when I'm putting things together. But as I'm getting the materials out and doing my cutting and layering, it generally will take me, I'm like, oh, look, I found this. I've been wanting to do something with this. So I'll start with... Um, the one piece that I that I want to make, and I'll I'll be working on the the, the cutting that I need to do to, to get it into the kiln, and then um, I usually like, you know, did you see the the movie Up with that dog Doug? It's like look squirrel, you know. It's uh, <laughs> you know you get excited by something, and I just I go with the moment of it. Um, but I always sort of start with you know um, in my last batch I you know I love it's Christmas every time I open the kiln after doing a batch and seeing how things turned out, um, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, so I will make notes to myself of, okay, this didn't turn out quite how I wanted it to be. So I'm going to try it, you know, either a little bit larger or smaller. Or it's just, or it's, it's, I've got too many square pieces. I want to mix it up. Um, or how would this look you know, if with fuchsia instead of just pink, you know, so um, mm -hmm. each new batch inspires uh, where I want to go with the next one. And, and also what my clients buy and, you know, custom orders. Yeah, was, uh, you must have been reading my mind. So <laughs> custom orders are definitely an option with you. People may bring in something that they want the earrings to match or mm -hmm. something along that line. Yes, in fact, uh, all of my rings are custom uh, because I have to make the, you know, have to use the ring that's to the size. So every ring that I sell is custom. So you could just sort of like say, I want, you know, something similar to this, and then I'll work with you on how, how I can make it because it, it has to work within a certain size. So, um, you know, I couldn't make this in a ring unless you want, you know, because this can't be made much, a, a lot smaller. Yeah. And I do custom bracelets and things like that. And really anything can be custom, including cufflinks. Whoa. All right. That's great. So I noticed that you're heavily involved in a professional organization. Um, and I, I'm sorry, I don't have the name of it on top of my head. That you're, if you would help me a little bit. Absolutely. It's an, uh, NCAGG, which is the national, um, now I'm going to fumble. <laughs> <laughs> National Capital Art Glass Guild, and I am the president. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's embarrassing I mean, how do you see the, the professional associations helping to spread the word in the community to support art? We had this discussion in, in my previous interview, and I don't care what medium it is. It just seems to me that you get the professional support or personal support, but have do you guys talk about you know how can we also get people interested in what we do and how we can support ourselves and the community yes that's definitely part of our mission you know our mission is to uh involve the community and get them you know uh interested and 
you know, understanding that we exist um, and, and, and our, our goal is to, you know, make uh, glass art a, a real craft and, and uh, make us all masters of you know, artisans of, of the craft. So um, there are like, Glen Echo is a, is a um, place in off MacArthur Boulevard in, in DC. And uh, it has a, a studio that takes care of all kinds of art, including glass. And they have artists that work on premise um, as well as artists and makers in, in Rockville. And, and I'm sure, you know, a number of other places that I'm not mentioning right now. And we, we do, um, we just um, started face, you know, our Facebook page. We discovered that um, it exists and it had been for years and it hadn't been active. So we reactivated uh, the Facebook and you just get, you know, involvement. And of course that can, you know, have the, the ripple effect of social media, how that can be. Um, but you know, you're, it's, a, it's a lot of competition for people's attention span these days. So you, you, you do the best you can and you get the members you know, to, to help. You and know, that's and, why we have MPA Art Fest. <laughs> and definitely MPA Art Fest, <laughs> because you're yeah. to meet people and you know, get the word out. Yeah. Um, so are there any themes or processes that, that you've been thinking about jumping into in relation to your current art that you would share with me? Is there something you've been thinking about that? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed, the, I missed the last part of that question. Uh, what, what would be a challenge for you? Have you been... Have you been entertaining? It's like, I find you very adventuresome. So are there some processes or are there some materials that you think that, you know, maybe you're ready for that next that you would share with us? Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I took a silversmithing class uh, in, that ended the first week in March uh, before we knew anything about the, the lockdown. And uh, because I want, I want to elevate, I mean, and I, I want to elevate my art. Right. I want to, you know, get in the, the best shows I, that I can get into. And, um, you know, what artist doesn't want to get better, faster, stronger all the time. Um, and I'd like to try framing some of my uh, pendants and things in, you know, silver, copper, um, things like that. I, I've seen some artists uh, do it with the, and, and I, it just is a whole different you know, level of elegance and, uh, um, work in you know, a craftsmanship. And so uh, Glenn Echo also offers those, those, um, those classes. And that's one of the next things on my list to try is like, how, you know, will it work for me? But you know, you just take a class and see how it goes. Level of elegance. Great phrase for you. I can just, <sighs> I can just see that emanating. So listen, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you kind of wish I had, and you'd like to share with our MPA audience? And beyond. Uh, well, um, I'm very proud to, to sh share that I was the featured artist in the June issue of Handmade Business Magazine, which is the, the so that that was uh, my, my first feature article, and that was uh, that was pretty exciting to to, to be in that. Um, also, with with COVID, I I don't think I felt the normal anxiety that uh, many many other people did because I'm very blessed to have the means that you know we live within and um we can feed ourselves um so we we give back in those ways but um the healthcare workers i, I just felt staying home i know is, is helpful to them but i had to give back so i have a a childhood friend who's a um, a NICU nurse and i donated earrings to the nursing staff uh to just as a thank you for for being there and doing something and it just made me feel like, you know, more than just saying thank you, I let them wear sparkly pretty things, thank you. And then they, they took a picture, you know, with who, the, the nurses that chose which, which of the earrings I donated. And they were, they were thrilled and, and, and I was, I think, more thrilled. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer Moffat. It's been a pleasure to interview with you and I wish you a great deal of success. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm thrilled to be at MPA Arts Fest, and I'm looking forward to be, this being the first of many years.